God humbles Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar, he was very embarrassed. Why? Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these were the prophet Daniel's three friends. They refused to obey the law that said that they had to bow down to the idol that the king had made. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. King Nebuchadnezzar at that time, he was the most powerful man on earth. And the people of Babylon, they worshiped many different gods. And the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were told to bow down and to worship the idol that the king had made, they refused. And that made the king very angry and go against them. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. It seemed that King Nebuchadnezzar thought that his gods were stronger than the one God in heaven, who is the true God. Are there other gods than one God of heaven? No, there are none. But why did King Nebuchadnezzar believe this was true, that his gods were stronger? Well, since he conquered all of these many, many nations, he thought that his gods were more successful. King Nebuchadnezzar was a proud man. And from the human perspective, people would think that he had every right, that he should be proud. He should, yes. Isaiah chapter 13 talks about Babylon, that its reign covered so much territory. Wow. If you look, if you look at a map, wow, you would see how huge the area is. It was all the way from Egypt to Iran and from Saudi Arabia all the way to Syria. A huge area. Look at this. The king's city, it had one of the seven wonders in the ancient world. What was it? It was the Hanging Gardens. Beautiful. Look at these pictures. Wow. We can see why that the king was so full of pride. This powerful man reigning over all the people. But is he the only one? Daniel chapter 4 says no. He's not the only one that thinks he's so superior in his reign. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at ease in my house and prospering in my palace. I saw a dream that made me afraid. This is the interpretation, O king. It is a decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king, that you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven. And seven periods of time shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. And as it is commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be confirmed for you from the time that you know that heaven rules. All throughout the book of Daniel, within the Bible, we see there's a strong emphasis of God's sovereignty over all things. And anyone who refuses to humble himself, God sees him and he will not allow him to rise. No, he will suppress him. But he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Now let's apply this to our Christian life. God does not change. He will suppress, suppress those who exalt themselves. And he will exalt those who are humble. 
all through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it talks about the positive things of people being humble and the negative things of those who are not humble. We should never think more of ourselves and exalt ourselves more than we ought. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. If we truly humble ourselves, then we will enjoy God's eternal blessings. Hey, who are they that are humble that God sees and gives blessings to? Who are they? Well, they are those who trust in Jesus alone for salvation, and they know that they have broken God's law, period. And they also know that they are like every other sinner. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. The only difference in the two of those who exalt themselves and those who are, who are humble is God's grace through saving them who have faith in Christ alone. I tell you a story, serious, true story. Long time ago, when Jesus was here on earth, people heard that Pilate, that he was worshiping a god. He was making sacrifices to him. What was he doing? He was killing the Galileans. And those are people who lived in Galilee. And in Luke chapter 13, the, pe the people, they asked Jesus, you know, about Pilate killing these people. They asked him a question. To Jesus what did they ask so they asked him they said the Galileans who died was the reason because they were worse sinners than the other Galileans who lived is that why during the culture back at that time people thought that any group particular group of people that died that they were worse sinners than other people in verse 3 Jesus answers no I tell you but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Wow. You know, that applies to all of us as well. Repentance. What does that mean? Well, we're all sinners. And unless we repent, we have no hope of getting to heaven. It's futile. Unless we turn to God. And the only way to do that, to turn to God the Father, is how? Through Jesus Christ himself, the way, the truth, and the life. You notice, the, the, the. What's that mean? Only one. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Not through your religion not through your education, not through your degree, not through your upbringing in a good home or whatever, not through anything of yourself. Am I gonna to go to heaven because I'm a good person? No, I'm a sinner like everyone else. Are you a sinner? Are you? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. If you are proud of your religion, proud of yourself, you're a good person, you exalt yourself, you're the same as King Nebuchadnezzar, and God will judge you. God will oppress you. Why? Because you're not humble. If you humble yourself, Realizing you are a sinner the same as all other people and that you have no hope of getting into heaven other than full dependence on Jesus Christ. Then you will be saved through Jesus alone. He is the Savior. He is the only one. Not your religion. It can't save you. You need to humble yourself. Confess your sins, period. Acknowledging you are a sinner. Can your religion help you? Can it save you? Can obeying the law? No. We are all failures in this. But Jesus Christ, trust in him today. And God's sovereignty, you will either be judged by him, his wrath against you, and he will oppress you or he will save you. The only hope is in Jesus Christ. Trust in him today. Corum Dio.